be honest. I don't think there's too many other ways of looking good other than owning a bruff, but these are fantastic looking motorcycles. Bruff ownership is about uh, refinement. It's a gentleman's civilised motorcycle. I was visiting the Paris Retromobile Show in Paris, which is one of the world's greatest great classic car shows, and Bruff Superior are there on display. And I and I just was so excited to see them there. So I went and talked to the and he offered me he, he, he struck my imagination saying, yeah, would you like to import these into Australia? Because I was I was going to buy one. And I thought, yes, yes I could do that. These two bikes here are SS hundreds, um, of which they're only building 300 units total. Um, there is no plans at the moment for a, a second version, so that makes them very limited collector's items. These are Euro 3, these are the first series. Now this is Euro 4, this is one of only one in the world, this is a 100 year anniversary, uh, which was last year, uh, they're now in the 101st year. So this bike essentially is the same as the Euro threes, but it has ABS, it has a few more refinements, etc. Uh, and this one comes in the beautiful white finish, um, which, as I say, they did as a one-off for the Paris show, and I think it looks fantastic. I think all the bikes look fantastic. The Pendine Sand Racer uh, was a non-limited edition model. that They'll make um, only small numbers of those again, but uh, they, they run out at around 105000 Australian dollars. With the Pendine Sand Race, so that harks back to the 1926 event where uh, George Bruff himself actually rode in the, on Pendine Sand in Wales and uh, created a new land speed record as well as winning some other races on the day. We've got another one here in, uh, in red, uh, Candy Upper Red, which is uh, one of only one in the world. Uh, we designed that here in Australia, uh, the factory's built it for us. Again, this is all Euro 4 with the new conical exhausts. This bike here. Um, Certainly the rarest bike that we have at the moment, it's called the Anniversary. Again, it's the anniversary of the 100th uh, year of building. One of only 100 in the world, uh, very uh, high-end uh, componentry, uh, fantastic performance. It's a 997 uh, 87 degree V-twin. There is turbo versions as well, and they will be out next year, uh, but currently it's just normally aspirated. Uh, the turbo version, uh, we've got photos of it. It's built by Aston Martin, or designed by Aston Martin. It'll be built at the Boxer factory. Again, only 100 of those planned. So as you can see, Bruff is a very limited uh, run, limited production motorcycle. And that is some of the attraction. People like to be different in the motorcycle world. People like to have something that other people don't have. Um, they want to turn up in a car park at the lights or in their garage to be able to show off something of their own personality, uh, something that says who they are. Bruff isn't for everybody, uh, but if it's Bruff is for you, certainly this is a bike that would only impress and it, I genuinely believe it's got a timeless line, a timeless design about it, that even in five years, 10 years, 100 years, this will still be an interesting looking motorcycle. Dale, you wanted me to ride this one first? Uh, only one cap works, the other's a dummy. Uh -huh. On that, they're both real. Intrigued is the, uh, this is a very, very, uh, very, very um, mild way of putting it. I am fascinated. I've always been fascinated by the brand anyway, because there's so much individual history. It's never been a motorcycle that is just invented and made and built to be sold. It's been an expression of George Bruff's personality in just about every way. The success of the brand in the first place was due entirely to the way George made the thing seem to the public, the way he individualized the bikes, the way when someone, uh, a journalist, called them the Rolls Royce of motorcycles, uh, Rolls Royce didn't like the idea very much, and they sent someone to the factory uh, to, uh, to have a look at what was going on. And George dressed all of his workers in white lab coats and white gloves while they were assembling the bikes and made everything super clean and tidy. And Rolls-Royce, the, the Rolls-Royce engineer, was so impressed that he went back to the board and said, look, 
let them keep the, keep the, the phrase, um, they deserve it. Nyes is only a percentage of the market, of the Australian market, who, who, will, who will want to invest in the bruff. The factory informs me that 60% of bruff buyers, the current bruff buyers, are collectors. So it's something that, that I, you know, I've got them in my office, but uh, it's something I can see somebody who appreciates mechanical things and, and seeing the motorcycle, can have it in their home or their office, their foyer. Uh, it's, so it's more than just a, something to ride, which has yeah, got some innovative features and great to ride, but something that you can look at it every day. It isn't meant to be the ultimate sports bike. It's not about the, even the ultimate riding bike, but you make a statement when you arrive. The association with, with not just wealthy people, but with people who are high public figures, well-known public figures, uh, did the bikes an enormous amount of good. Having Lawrence of Arabia uh, riding the bikes and uh, in fact having uh, two of them made to, to suit him, he was quite short. Uh, and in fact one of them even had a, a, a scabbard for his swagger stick. Uh, for, uh, for when he was, uh, he was being Colonel, uh, Colonel Lawrence. Bruff in France had a lot of inquiries from Australia. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of wealthy people in Australia that were looking to buy something a little different uh, for their motorcycle collections or the man cave, or even as their daily ride. Australia is a, is a very, what I would call a very sophisticated market. We have the best of everything in a, such a small population. So we, we, we have a huge choice. And to me, one of the th attractions of the Bruff, Bruff brand, because they're, they're, they're basically handmade, hand assembled, they can be, they can be or basically produced to order. And one thing I was fascinated by when I was at the factory, that a particular Pendine Sam was done up in the same colour scheme as the guy's 356 Porsche, which is an old, one of the first Porsche sports cars. And I, I see that as another, I suppose, something that Bruff can offer is for people who want a bike to match their car colour or something, some other colour. So, you know, we have our stock models, but I think our strength will be in bikes developed for our Australian collectors and owners. Bruff Superior was started in 1919 uh, by George Bruff. It was a UK brand, um, now made by a fantastic motorcycle factory in Toulouse in France called Boxer. Uh, they've also got a fantastic history it goes back quite some time. They've built some very innovative motorcycles over the years. Its appeal to me is that the French have taken a great British brand, Bruff Superior, and taken, used the, the bikes from the 30s as a styling cue for their SS100. And that's the, that's the bike that appeals to me from a cosmetic point of view. Uh, and it's really for people who appreciate it. Like I've always loved, you know, like a Ducati 916. I've always liked motorbikes that you can see. With, uh, with the current Bruff that's been started in 2013, uh, the idea was to have a very limited bespoke run of motorcycles that were reminiscent of the older bikes, um, of which only 3,048 were made over a very short span of time. They finished in 1940 when the, uh, the war, as you'd probably guess, called uh, production to an end. So they restarted in 2013, um, the new bikes started rolling off the floor in 2014. To me, motorcycles are about the mechanical aspects. To me, to me it's about seeing the engine and the components. It's like a, a form of jewellery to me, uh, or an art, an art piece. Um, to, so I'm a mechanically minded person, and I've been involved in bikes since I was 15, riding on the streets since I was 17, and, and I was a motorcycle dealer for 15 years. So, and I'm a fitter and turner by trade. So I have an appreciation of mechanical things and I just enjoy looking at mechanical, how things work. <laughs>